Good morning, folks. Let's start with the buoys. This event south of Alaska is not really an event. It's a minor deviation. The blip in the Bay of Bengal occurred as the news uploaded yesterday. Could have been a rogue wave or an error. Then there's this one. We eagerly awaited responses from ABM on this, and here's one that our buddy Michelle received, claiming they turned it off purposely because they believe they got dragged about and did not want to cause panic. If it got dragged by a ship, the depth would rise, not fall, even if the anchor detached, which I highly doubt. Also look at the bottom of the email where it says to monitor the adjacent detectors, which is interesting. They already had this area crowded. Why add another if you weren't expecting something, like the Indonesian tectonic breakup, which happened in April? Now we get readings from below and you want to say it's bad data? Naturally. I'm suspicious. Ten points to New York for stalling a frack attack. Another big ups to Wyoming. Could be the biggest wind farm on the continent. Interesting article here on the Mega Canyon of Mars and how they think it was formed. I suggest you read it. Then go learn what really made that canyon. A five-pointer struck south of Australia a bit ago, but almost together and not yet on my map. A six-pointer hit the Loyalty Islands. 5.9 struck south of Japan this morning. Larger quakes continue to rattle Iceland. A 5.2 in the South Sandwich Islands. Coming east to a record-setting hailstorm in South Africa. Allegedly multiple tornadoes in California, luckily with no damage. PA took a twist or two, and on the other side of me, sitting in Ohio, look how many precipitation totals for Illinois. Here's a look at how that went down on satellite. You know what this is. I'm zoomed in on a cyclonic wind pattern of a deep low pressure minimum over the northwest. Its boundary extends to the midwest and their convergence heralds tonight's severe weather watch zone. Well folks, it took forever, but finally the low in the North Atlantic is going to creep over Europe 48 hours after I thought it would. Here's where the clouds are moving. Tropical storm Sandy in the Caribbean developed nicely and is expected to go north-northeast over some populated areas. Australia, it's a long summer. Please leave some heat records for later. While New Zealand crept out of the Antarctic low, it might not be enough to warm to your satisfaction, and unfortunately, it won't last. Geomagnetic conditions are quiet. We have no disturbance or plasma penetration, and induction is nil. F1 critical frequency is another story. Highest of the year, getting scarier by the day, but hold out hope this is the peak. As we come back for the last year and one year ago to the day, we had the highest readings ever recorded and the only one ever recorded that was higher than yesterday's. By the way, this is last solar maxima. Yikes. This is the primary active region on the sun. Looking at the trailing half, a line appears to cut down the dark central umbra within the orange penumbra. Well, you can see that that line separates both polarities within the same penumbra. As I said yesterday, that's a delta spot capable of X flares. Noah, you had an extra 14 hours to watch this thing, but I guess you disagreed and thought it was just beta. Well, boom. Er Comte de Zona. She woke up violently over the last 24 hours with multiple M flares and this X flare. Sorry, Noah. Luckily, there is not a large CME associated with it. So this is what we were waiting for. It's good that it's not an X10. Good that no mega CME is headed our way, but we couldn't just go flareless forever. Don't forget, still got that dark coronal hole up top. Got a feeling she'll be geo-effective during the Saturn alignment in two days. Lot going on, folks. Eyes open. No fear. Solar flare and earthquake watches continue at 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.